Did you know that there are over 7,000 languages in the world? 7,117 to be exact. Let's face it, speaking multiple languages is an incredibly crucial skill in this modern, interconnected world. With business, travel, and culture gone global in these last few decades, there's never been a better time to learn another language than right now. Many of us have different reasons for speaking multiple languages, whether you're reconnecting with your heritage for the joy of travel and cultural experiences, or for furthering your career possibilities. Wait, speaking multiple languages will make me more money? You bet. In fact, studies show that bilingual or multilingual people earn five to 20% more than their coworkers who don't. The real question is, which language should you learn right now and why? And how does one go about learning a language in a fun and efficient manner? The answer is subjective. It's totally gonna depend on you. But there are certain factors worth taking into account. So in this video, I've put together a list of five languages I believe are worth learning right now. While there are a lot more languages than five, as we know, over 7,000, there are a couple of honorable mentions that I'm including towards the end of this video. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna share some best practices and tips for learning languages, so stick around, don't go anywhere. Before we dive into the list, take a second. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing to my channel. If you are, consider joining and becoming a member. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I know we can get this video well over 5,000 likes. Also, tell me your name, where you're from, what languages you speak, and what languages you would like to learn down there in the comment section. Okay, let's go. Vamanos. The first language on my list is Spanish. With over 548 million native speakers, Spanish is the second most widely spoken native language in the world. It's the most widely spoken romance language in the world, more on romance languages in a bit, and it's the third most widely used language on the internet. And when it comes to travel, Spanish is spoken in 21 different countries on three different continents. Can you guess which continents? Let me know in the comment section. Imagine exploring the vibrant cultures of Spain, Mexico, Peru, Argentina, the list goes on and on. And being able to speak Spanish will allow you to dig that extra layer deeper and have those truly unforgettable cultural experiences. From a business perspective, learning Spanish can open doors to a vast consumer market in Latin America and Spain not to mention in the United States, where Spanish is spoken by over 54 million people. Many global companies actively seek bilingual employees and speaking Spanish can give you that competitive edge that might just help you secure your next best job. You may not actually know, but I am bilingual in Spanish. I learned Spanish in middle school and high school in my Spanish language classes. And then I moved to Spain after university and I lived in Spain for three years. A mí me encanta hablar en español, aunque hoy en día viviendo aquí en Nueva Zelanda no tengo tanto oportunidades de hablar. Pero yo creo que aprender un idioma es muy similar en montar un bici. Y por eso es una cosa que no vas a olvidar en mucho tiempo. Pero la verdad es, si no lo usas, lo pierdes. Y con mi español, yo necesito usarlo escuchando en podcasts o eh, la música, pero sobre todo hablando en vivo con gente que hablan en español. Yo creo que aprendiendo español ha sido una de las cosas más importantes en mi vida que ha ayudado en guiar mi vida viviendo en España, aprendiendo español y usándolo en mi vida. Ha sido una cosa que no, no cambiará para nada. No quiero decir que hablando español es lo más útil porque todo depende en su vida y donde vives. Pero para mí, naciendo en San Diego, California, cerca de la frontera con México, aprendiendo español ha sido una cosa súper útil. So, why is Spanish so widely spoken? Well, that's because back in the day, Spain was a collection of fractured kingdoms. Up until 1492, when Columbus sailed the ocean blue on an exploration mission for the king and queen of Spain, Ferdinand and Isabella. Columbus and subsequent explorers went out and colonized the Americas, 
At its peak in 1810, the Spanish Empire covered 13 million square kilometers, or 5 million square miles, making it one of the largest empires in history. While the history of the Spanish Empire has many dark chapters, including the brutal colonization and destruction of the cultures in the Americas, the language is still spoken around the world. Another reason I like Spanish is because it's a member of the Romance language family. That doesn't mean romantic, although Spanish and a lot of these other languages in the family are quite romantic languages. Romance languages are derived from vulgar Latin, basically the languages that developed in Southern Europe during the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire spoke Latin, but Latin was spoken with different dialects all around the empire, and those dialects eventually grew into their own languages. Can you list all the Romance languages? Let me know. Go down there in the comment section, give it a shot. The benefit of learning one of these languages, like Spanish, is that the rest of the languages become easier to learn because they all share a lot of similarities. For example, I've been to Italy many times, but I don't really speak Italian. Non parlo molto italiano. I do, however, speak Spanish, and because Spanish and Italian can be quite similar, I'm able to speak this mixture of Spanish and Italian and make myself understood. It's not perfect, but it is practical. Number two on the list, French. I'm currently learning to speak French with rocket languages. More than two million people all over the world are currently using rocket languages to learn their next language. Their program gives you everything you need to understand the language and the culture like a local. Rocket Languages has award-winning courses in 14 languages, including all the heavy hitters like Spanish, French, Italian, German, not to mention Mandarin Chinese, Hindi, Korean, Japanese, the list goes on and on. I really love the way Rocket Languages approaches learning a new language. The courses are tailored to your new language. Now, when I learned Spanish, I did it the traditional way in a classroom with textbooks, and then I also did it through immersion and listening and repeating. And what I found was it's actually this blend that works best to cover all of your bases and really help you absorb all of the new information, but use the language in a meaningful way. Vous parlez français? Vous parlez français? Rocket Languages blends all of these different aspects of language learning, but what I really like about it is that it allows you to practice on the spot speaking. Comment vous appelez-vous? Je m'appelle Paul. Letting you train your ears and your mouth with downloadable audio tracks. There's also writing, listening, speaking, flashcards, and conversational activities, plus so much more. The best part is you have lifetime access to your courses, so you can start learning now, but if life gets a little bit busy and you need to press pause, that's totally okay. You can pick it up again in the future. If you're getting ready for a trip or you're moving abroad, it's a great way to have access to these learning resources forever. So take advantage of their amazing courses and get started today. I've linked them down there in the description of this video. French, spoken by over 280 million people worldwide, French is the fifth most spoken language in the world. Not only is French the official language of France, it's also the official language of 28 other countries. It's also an important language in many international organizations like the United Nations, which is based in the French-speaking city of Geneva, Switzerland, as well as being an important language in the International Red Cross. It's one of the world's most popular languages to learn after English and Spanish. French is also a member of the Romance language family as well as the Indo-European language family, but it's mostly known as the language of love, poetry, and fine arts. It's got flair, am I right? But first, a bit of history. The first written document that still exists in French was written in 824 AD. The French language has come a long way. By the 13th century, it was well established and spoken in many parts of Europe. The language became linked to high society and the aristocracy, and it became considered a sophisticated language, which made people choose to learn it because they would gain status and potentially wealth. During the mid 14th century, French was Europe's most spoken language. It was used by many countries as the language of international relations and diplomacy, 
and it was also the official language of the royal court in England for many centuries. French remains a very relevant language today. It's a language that continues to grow, with a projected 500 million speakers by 2025. As an English speaker, it's impossible to ignore the influence of French. English has roots both in German and French, and is often nicknamed the bastard child of German and French. But wait, why is there French influence in the English language? English history can get a little bit complicated because so many different cultures have moved through those islands. Originally, you had the Celtic culture there, then the Romans came, and then when the Romans left, Anglo-Saxon tribes, Germanic speakers came, and they kind of ruled there for, I don't know, five or 600 years, maybe more. And then once they were established, the Vikings came, and then when the Vikings left, William the Conqueror, he invaded England in 1066 and brought with him the French language. And then French became a very important part of the language which would eventually become English. That's why there's so many French words in the English language. Additionally, French is spoken in many parts of the United States, primarily in New Hampshire, Maine, and Louisiana. Why? Well, because a huge part of what is now the United States was once a part of France until a cash-strapped Napoleon Bonaparte sold it in 1804 to US President Thomas Jefferson in perhaps the best deal ever called the Louisiana Purchase. Jefferson bought 828,000 square miles, over 2,000 square kilometers, for just three cents a kilometer. Listen to the song Acadian Driftwood by the band. Currently in Europe, French is the second most taught language in schools. And outside of Europe, Africa has the most French speakers, with 22 different countries having French as their official language. Remarkably, French is spoken on five different continents, making it one of the few languages, alongside English, to be so widely spoken. Bloomberg rates French as the third most important language to learn for business. And when it comes to travel, France is one of the biggest tourism destinations in the world. Understanding French can enhance your experience while wandering the back streets of Paris or enjoying the beautiful views of Provence. We've all heard rumors about how rude Parisian waiters can be, but trust me, they're a lot more rude if you're not at least trying to speak French. So it's worth investing some time to put your best foot forward. Okay, let's move on to the third language of the list, German. Ich kann kein Deutsch sprechen. I can't speak German. I know a couple of phrases, but maybe you're like me, one of the over 40 million people in the United States who can trace some heritage back to Germany. German has around 130 million native speakers. It has the largest economy in the European Union, and Germany is a hub for innovation and trade. Learning German can give you a competitive edge in industries such as engineering, automotive, or technology. In fact, German has the largest number of speakers of any language in the European Union. That's more than French, English, or Spanish. Germany is actually the most populated region of the European Union. But German is not just the official language of Germany. It's also the official language of Austria, Switzerland, Liechtenstein, and Luxembourg. It's basically the lingua franca of Central and Eastern Europe. So if you're like me, one of the 40 million Americans who can trace lineage back to Germany, why not give learning German a shot? Quick little side story, according to a DNA test, I've got about 10% German in me. I'm predominantly Scottish, 40%. I feel it, I feel so Scottish inside. Unite us, unite the clans. But, on my mom's side, there's a lot of German history. In fact, my great-great-great-grandfather migrated to the United States from a small town in Germany called Tauberbischofsheim in the Baden-Württemberg region of Germany. The story goes he left Germany because he didn't want to get drafted into the army and he moved to the United States where the Civil War broke out and he ended up volunteering for the Union side, fighting in many battles to defend the Union, the Constitution, and the freedom of all peoples. He eventually married and settled in Kansas, and German was spoken in the household of my grandfather. But eventually my grandfather forgot German 
and that was the end of the German language in my family history. From a travel perspective, I visited Germany a few different times and always enjoyed my time there. And there's a lot going on. The Germans are always keen for a big party, especially in cities like Berlin or the Carnival, in cities like Cologne or Dusseldorf. But I've always really enjoyed visiting Bavaria, which is in Southern Germany cities like Munich and up in the Alps along the border with Austria. In terms of lifestyle, German is the language of intellectuals and philosophers like Goethe, Kant, and Nietzsche. Not to mention psychoanalysts like Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung. Understanding German allows you to appreciate those works and to be a part of Germany's intellectual traditions. Okay, number four on the list, Chinese. Let's dive into the vast opportunities of Chinese. Chinese has over 1.2 billion speakers, making it the most spoken language on planet Earth. That's around one fifth of the global population, which means one out of every five people alive right now on this planet speaks Chinese. With more than 4,000 years of recorded history, China is actually the world's longest continuous civilization. The largest country in Asia, China stretches from the continent's eastern seaboard to the borders of Afghanistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, and Kazakhstan in the west. Basically from the Pacific Ocean to the Himalayas. That's a huge swath of territory that encompasses all different types of ecosystems from the tallest mountains on earth to lush tropical jungles, as well as the cold expanse of the Gobi Desert, home to one of the coolest animals out there, the Bactrian camel, as well as the third largest river on earth, the Yangtze. China is huge and its contributions to human history are equally large. Did you know the Chinese invented paper, the printing press, gunpowder? What about silk, the compass, or the tea process. How about pasta? <gasps> yeah, that's right. Pasta noodles were invented in China and if the story is to be believed, brought back to Europe and Italy by the famous explorer Marco Polo in the 13th century. That's why the Silk Road existed, to connect the markets of China with their advanced techniques of production and their exotic goods back to Europe. China's civilization, lasting for 4,000 years, has gone through various periods of progress and power, followed by stagnation and decline. In the last few decades, China has become an economic powerhouse. It currently has the world's second largest economy, and if things are gonna continue moving in the trajectory that they are, it will soon be the world's biggest economy. China is a global leader in manufacturing, technology, and finance. So learning Chinese can provide you with a competitive edge well into the future. These are all great reasons to learn Chinese, but for me, I actually really want to travel to China and explore it. So learning Chinese could be really beneficial for that. Being able to speak Chinese will allow you to immerse yourself even deeper into the culture, understanding the mysteries of the Great Wall and the Terracotta Army, but also enjoying the vibrant metropolises of Shanghai and Beijing. From a lifestyle standpoint, Chinese is a fascinating language with a rich heritage in art, philosophy, and literature. By learning Chinese, you gain access to the works of great philosophers like Li Bai, as well as Confucius, and not to mention, it will allow you to have an even deeper understanding of the martial art Kung Fu. And who doesn't want to have a deeper understanding of Kung Fu, like for real? It'll even let you watch one of my favorite movies in the original language, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. If you haven't seen that movie, right after this, rent it, watch it. It's so good. So if you're looking for a challenge that will pay off well into the future, consider learning Mandarin Chinese. Okay, lastly in the list, number five, we have Hindi, the language of India. Hindi is the official language of India spoken by over 500 million people on the subcontinent. India is one of the world's fastest growing economies with a thriving IT industry, a vibrant film industry, and a rich cultural heritage. If you travel to India, you know what I'm talking about. There really is no place quite like it. It's one of the most overwhelming and addicting travel experiences I've ever had. My first day in India felt like an eternity. 
so fascinating. Definitely a place that I am really, really looking forward to visiting again, getting back to, exploring more of. It's just an incredible place. And learning Hindi will allow you to have an even more meaningful connection to India. In the words of Mark Twain, India is the one land that all men desire to see, and having seen once by even a glimpse would not give that glimpse for all the shows of all the rest of the globe combined. From a business perspective, learning Hindi offers vast opportunities for trade, outsourcing, and collaboration. In terms of travel, India is a land of incredible diversity, with majestic historical sites like the Taj Mahal, bustling cities like Mumbai or Delhi, and serene landscapes in the Himalayas and Kerala. Knowing Hindi will allow you to communicate and dive deeper with the incredibly hospitable people of India. And India is one of the world's most spiritual countries. It's the home of Hinduism, Sikhism, Jainism, Islam, Buddhism, Christianity, Zoroastrianism, and the Baha'i faith. No wonder the Beatles went there and were forever changed. So by learning Hindi, you're not only opening yourself up to the potential of 500 million new friends, you're opening yourself up to a wealth of information. And as India continues to grow, expand, and evolve, learning Hindi might just be the best call for you. Okay, so while we've discussed the top five languages, there are a couple more honorable mentions that should be on the list. Japanese, Korean, Portuguese, and Russian. Japanese is the language of cutting edge technology, anime, and a rich cultural heritage. Korean is the language of K-pop, Korean dramas like Squid Game or Physical 100, and a thriving entertainment industry. Portuguese, with over 235 million speakers in Europe, South America and Africa is also a top contender. And Russian with 147 million speakers is the seventh most spoken language on earth. It's spoken unofficially in 19 different countries and officially in four different countries. Okay, so now that we've discussed the list of languages, I'd like to share with you a couple of best practices for learning a language. It's widely known that the best way to learn a language is in bed, but if that's not currently possible for you, these are the next best steps. Firstly, immerse yourself in the language as much as possible. Watch movies, listen to music, radio, and podcasts in the language, and also read in the language. Surrounding yourself with the language helps you develop your natural ear for it. Secondly, practice the language with native speakers or language exchange partners. You can also look for local groups in the area you live for language get-togethers. Engaging in conversations not only improves your speaking skills, but it also exposes you to the nuances and cultural aspects of the language. Thirdly, make the most of language learning applications or websites like Rocket Languages. Online resources that provide structured language learning are incredibly helpful. And lastly, consider studying abroad or doing a language immersion program. Being immersed in the language and the culture really accelerates your language learning and it's just an unforgettable experience. So in conclusion, learning a new language, whether it's a language that's on this list or one that isn't, is a great life goal, life skill. It's going to open up whole new opportunities for you, connections with people you might never have met otherwise, and it's a really fulfilling challenge. So don't give up. It is a process. It might take a little while, but it's so, so worth it. Okay, friends, well, let me know which language you wanna learn next down there in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed with notifications enabled if you are not already. If you are already subscribed, please consider joining this channel. You can click that and get a bunch of behind the scenes additional content. Thank you all so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Hasta luego. Ciao. Bon voyage.